What is up everyone? It's Ricky 572 Return of Chance. Today is May 30th, 2024, and we're gonna hop on and do a market watch. I usually say quick market watch, but they tend to go like 20 to 30 minutes. So hopefully you guys uh tag along and are able to watch those 20 30 minute market watches. Uh first off, we're gonna be starting off with Dragon Door the Dust Dragon. Uh, a lot of people are focusing on like the rarity collection cards. I'm kind of gonna stay away from them until more people post. We still have a lot of people who haven't got their uh, shipments yet this week. Uh, we actually already got our, our case uh, here. It, it's here, uh, but we're not gonna open it till Sunday so that we could get, get everyone together and then uh, open it together. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, Dragon Duel the Dust Dragon. Uh, we're gonna be focusing on some other cards that some people might not be looking at. Uh, we're let's see dust dragon. I remember picking up around seven to ten dollars uh, Right now. It looks like it's at 41 listings. Uh, we have it hitting a new high price point of 2668 2669 uh, Heading up to 28 and 30 almost reaching $30 price point um It didn't get a reprint in the rarity collection. I know the Rembrum one. I Think that it's that's what it's called the other fusion monster uh, from Photon Hypernova did get a reprint in the Ready Collection 2 set, so that's why this one's going up even higher in price. Unfortunately, though, I didn't hold on to mine at the time I needed some money, so I sold some of these off. I picked them up for like around seven ish dollars and I sold them for like around 12 ish dollars. Uh, so I didn't lose money, but also I should have held on to them um, and sold them. I could have sold them for even higher right now, but that's just what happens when you're adulting or when you're adult in life. Like, uh, you just, things come up and you never know when you might need some money. But yeah, Dust Dragon reaching a new high price point right now. Next up, we have Light Sworn Dragonling. Uh, this one is a new ultra rare from Light of Destruction. I mean, Legacy of Destruction. It uh, looks like it's bouncing up a little bit. I picked these up for around $15. Initially, I was going to play Light Sworn, but I already got rid of my, um, my um what was it my m cities my horse package so i'm gonna just sell off the deck we have 77 listings for this card uh we have it at 1819 1820 19 dollars heading up to 1947 so trying to make its way up to the 20 dollar mark let me know how you guys feel about lights one dragonling i heard uh, the community say that this is kind of high in price for what it is uh lights worn i've seen a couple tops uh, it doesn't top consistently, but I've seen a couple uh, slide and like top cut and stuff. Uh, so let me know down below how you guys feel about Lights Worn. If you guys think it has more potential in the future, um, I I think I'm gonna sell mine around like twenty twenty four dollars. I picked them up around fifteen, so I'm still plusing. But yeah, I sold off my Horus package, and I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna uh, give up on Lights Worn for now. Uh, Super, Star, Star, Super Star Slayer Typhon Sky Crisis, another card I already sold off, uh, but it is going up even higher in price a little bit. Uh, we have 59 listings on the market. It looks like this card is staying around $30, $32.25, $32, $33, $32.52, and $31.99. At its highest price point, it hit about $37. I sold around $27-ish. Uh, I picked them up around $13 to $15 like when they first came out. I thought they were really cheap. I think I picked up like seven or eight copies, but I already got rid of them. Unfortunately, now though, uh, initially I was thinking about playing Marincis for the NAWCQ uh, event, but right now it looks like I'm going to be playing Vanquish. So I'm leaning towards Vanquish so just because they can main shift there. So I might need to pick one up. That's that that kind of sucks because I'm gonna have to pay a premium on this card right now. I should have just kept mine, but that's just what happens. Uh, let me know how you guys feel about Superstar Slayer Typhon Sky Crisis. Uh, do you guys see it continuing to go up even higher in price, or is it gonna come back down? Uh, I've spoke about this one a little bit uh, actually yesterday on my Instagram or Rio YouTube Rio TikTok. Uh, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. E Purely Noir missed the reprint in the Ready Collection 2 set. So it's up in price. A lot of the other X seeds we're going to be looking at are up in price too. This was a 50 cent card. And right now we have it at $8, $8.75, $8.85, and $9. So yeah, way up in price. It's from Duelist Nexus. supposed to be in the 10s. So uh, just be aware of that. It might get a reprint in 10s. 
Uh, but that's until September. So anyone who does want to play purely right now is going to have to pay a premium on this card. Uh, we have uh, E Purely Beauty from Amazing Defenders. This one did not get a reprint in the Rarity Collection 2 set. Uh, was sitting around like 30 cents. I know I have some of these in bulk. Right now they're climbing up to $2. Uh, 199 124 135 basically like two dollars two dollars and fifty cents with shipping so another card you might want to go dick through bulk for because since people are picking up the purely cards and are going to want to build the deck since it's kind of affordable uh, with all the reprints and stuff uh, they're just going to pick up these other little cards that did not get reprinted uh, we have e purely plump 2 this was sitting around like 20 30 cents also going up in price 129 150 167 182 and hitting the two dollar mark so this might be a good time to sell these off uh just because it's it, it's like in high demand right now since everyone's picking up like the purely cards x purely noir the last one from amazing defenders was sitting around 30 cents and now we have it climbing up to basically the two dollar mark, one ninety nine, one ninety nine, then two fifty, three dollars, and two sixty four. So yeah, go dig through that bulk. If you guys opened up Amazing Defenders, I didn't open up too much, but I know I have some of these in bulk, so I'm gonna just get rid of them right now while the hype is up. Memento Anguish. I was thinking about playing Mementos, but seeing the price of Bone Parties made me want to sell them. I picked up Bone Parties around like seven, and we already saw they were hitting like thirty dollars, thirty ish dollars. Uh, Anguish. It's starting to uh, trend upwards a little bit as well. Uh, we have 35 listings on the market. I picked these up around seven, seven-ish. Yeah, that's what they were like a couple months ago. And right now we have them at $18.99, $18.99, $19, $19.49, $19.94, dollars and heading up to the $20 price point. I only have two listed. I actually have five of them. I need to update that. Uh, if you guys want to pick some up, return a chance right here. I'll put some more up right now because I did pick up a couple of them. Uh, Anguish starting to go up in price following the trend of um, Bone Party. I could see it going up even higher though because this one's like one of the main starters for the deck. I, I know there's a Dark Blade that comes in Collector Rare, but its other rarity is a, a Super Rare. But Anguish is really the one that gets you started because if you start off with Dark Blade, you're going to summon, you're going to go in, use its effect to bring out Anguish. So Anguish is the one you want. Uh, to have the three of so I could see these going up even higher when the new support comes out so let me know down below how you guys feel about anguish uh cashier rice heart this one did not get a reprint I know the uh right saw the the field spell the cashier field spell did get a reprint but this one didn't uh this one was sitting around like nine ish ten ish dollars slowly starting to climb up at 42 listings on the market we have twelve dollars twelve oh eight twelve oh nine thirteen seventy four thirteen seventy three and then heading up to the fifteen dollar price point so just keep an eye out for cashier rice heart also from photon hypernova so it might get reprinted at tens it should get reprinted in the tens uh so just be aware of that Heatwave looks like it's starting to go down in price. Tenpai still continues to be one of the dominant decks in the format, but Heatwave went down in price instead of up. Now we, this, this card used to be like around twenty to thirty dollars for for each of its copies. Now it looks like the copy started to go down. We have the commons around like twelve ish. Uh, commons right here from the Speed Dual Torrent Pack five around twelve, twelve thirteen dollars, and then we have the rare ones around let's see fifty eight listings. It looks like we have listings for this one starting at. $15, $15, $16 for lightly played, and then $17. So, yeah, it did start to go down in price from what it was. Not a bad time to pick these up. I know they played this, they main this, I think, um, in case their opponent makes them go first or something. So, just keep an eye out for Heat Wave. If you guys need to, to pick some up right now, they're half the value that they were at a couple months back. Did we talk about Evos or Lars on our last market watch? I don't think we did. If we did, though, it's going up a little bit even higher in price. I'm sorry if I repeated uh, this card. If we did mention it on our past market watch, I just can't remember. I've been drinking a little bit. Uh, but this card, uh, we said to pick up around $3. Uh, right now, it is double that. 49 listings on the market. It looks like we have... Does this count? I think this is a listing six dollars right here i think this is also listing five dollars uh but then we go up to 775 uh 699 and then hitting the eight dollar mark no big walls on the first page because that's korean asian so that 
that one doesn't count. So yeah, no big walls on the first page. This card could easily reach a $10 price point. I think I heard that, uh, is it Chimera? I don't think it's Chimera because I think they get locked into, um, into fusions, if I'm not mistaken. It could be Chimera though. Let me know down below what deck is using Evo Evozer Lars. I know there was a Vanquish, no, not Vanquish, so there was a Virtual World deck that topped recently. It won, uh, I think it was Spanish Nationals or something like that. Um, and they were running a copy of Evozer Lars because it is a uh, rank six and uh, Virtual World could easily go into rank sixes and rank, uh, I think nines and threes or something like that. So they were taking a copy of Volzer Lars. Maybe that's what made this card go up a little bit higher in price. But yeah, they're starting to reach the seven to eight dollar price point. So keep an eye out for our Volzer Lars. I'm selling at ten dollars. I picked them up for three dollars. So that's not a bad um, investment right there. Usually I don't uh, talk about like higher rarity cards, but this one I think might be a good pickup. It already started to go up in price. I picked mine up around three-ish dollars. Right now they are at 46 listings. We have listings starting at 475, 479, 460, 490, 595, 595, 473, 517, and then 598. So it is starting to go up a little bit in price. At five dollars, I don't think it's a bad pickup just because it's um. I guess the second highest rarity available for Exodia the Forbidden One. I know we're getting some new, we're getting a new fusion card that lets you fusion summon uh, using, ah, fuck, I forgot what, my bad. I forgot what the name of the card was, but I know it's coming out in Infinite Forbidden that helps you like fusion summon using Exodia piece or something like that. Uh, but Exodia the Forbidden One is at, let's see, I think that's the highest rarity we have available. I mean, if you count like the, uh, these right here uh, Technically starlight rare is the highest rarity and then after that to me is quarter century rare Let me know how you guys feel about about that in the comments below But yeah, I think starlight is the highest rarity and then after that comes the quarter century uh, Seeker rare version. So I think it might be a good investment for the future might be a long-term hold uh, for like collectors and stuff or, or for your for your binder but I think it could double in price, triple in price, even quadruple in price later on down the line, trying to reach the price of like the Starlight version. Cause it's close to it. That This is a $250 card. And just cause this one has a stamp on it, um, I, I guess that's why it's undervalued. But to me, it's close to being that kind of rarity. So we'll see what happens. Uh, might be coping, but let me know down below how you guys feel about that quarter century secret Exodia head. Uh, Unchained Soul of Anguish did not get a reprint in the Rarity Collection. I, Unchained Soul of Rage did. Uh, so this one might be one of those cards. I know you bell text one, one printing of this card uh, when they get their new uh, fusion monster. Uh, they still play the Unchained package. At, at least that's what I've seen from OCG builds. So this one might not be a bad pickup. It might go up even higher in price. Uh, right now we have 50 less than for the super rare. Uh, we have it sitting at 244, 246, 285, 320, 325, and 337. I think it could easily go up to a $5 card though. And then the Seeker Rare, some Chaos Impact. Uh, these are at 850, 899, $9, $9, 940, and 841. Uh, looks like they have been going up since March. In March, they were around three ish dollars. So. Yeah, I think they could go up a little bit higher than that. Let me know down below how you guys feel about Unchained Soul of Anguish. Uh, Cross Sheep, this is a card I've been... I actually picked up, like, how many play sets? Like, six play sets of this? Uh, last year, around, like, a dollar-ish. Uh, and they haven't gone up too much, but looks like listings on them are starting to go even lower. I picked the... Last time I took a look at them, they were around like 100 listings each, but right now they're going a little bit lower. Looks like the rare ones are at 31 listings from Ignition Assault, uh, 254, 288, 315, 345, and 225. So like around three-ish to four-ish dollars for this rare version. Uh, then we have the Ultra Rare from Battles of Legend Armageddon at 34 listings. Uh, this one's at 218, 250, 299, and then three-ish dollars all to 199 so let's call it a three dollar ultra rare 
And then this Prismatic Seeker Rare from the 2021 tens. To me, this is the highest rarity. 68 listings on the market. Uh, we do have this car showing that it's trending upwards according to the graph. 175, 215, 220, 224, 225, 275, and then reaching that $3 price point. I just feel like Cross Sheep has a lot of potential for a combo decks. Especially if they're able to fusion summon and use the effect to basically monster reborn. Because uh, it does say uh, if a monster is best summoned to a zone, this card points to, you could apply the following effects in sequence. And if you've reborn a uh, fusion monster, you could special summon a level. You could fusion. Okay, if you special summon a fusion monster, special summon one level four or lower monster from your graveyard. So that's a pretty uh, good, uh, I guess, combo piece. I think Cross Sheep, unless it gets a reprint down the line, it's going to continue to go up in price. But let me know how you guys feel about Cross Sheep down below. And last card on today's market watch is going to be Format Skipper. So this is a card that I saw uh, some decks in the OCG use in their Fiendsmith builds. Uh, Fiendsmith is an archetype we're getting in Infinite Forbidden. And it looks like it, it's doing pretty well over in the OCG. So I just want to take a look at Format Skipper. It looks like it's still under a dollar but if you guys are planning to play fiendsmith might now might not be a bad time to pick these up the the ultra rares because the con we do have comments from soul burner but the ultra is the higher rarity uh right now we have 99 listings for the ultra rare it looks like it already started trend upwards we had this car sitting at 27 cents and it's going up to 28 29 30 cents 33 cents 34 cents 42 cents so not too much but who knows? This card can maybe be worth like a, like three to five dollars, uh, one day. Uh, a while back we took a look at um, what was it the beast, uh, the one that you Bell uses, beast. We took a look at Dark Beckoning Beast when this card was sitting around like it's also from the 2021 tens. I think Format Skipper is 20, 2021 tens, right? Oh no, it's Battles of Legend. So I think it's even harder to get than the um the dark beckoning beast but yeah we were taking a look at dark beckoning beast when it was around like 50 60 cents and it just shot up to like five dollars so maybe the same thing could happen to format skipper if uh fian smith uh does use it here in the tcg but we'll see what happens i'm just saying uh pick these up before they go up in price if you are planning to play fian smith fian smith that's going to be it for today's Market Watch, though. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, go follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and X at Return of Chance. This is Ricky572, and we'll see you guys next time.